why the narcissist wants to make you his extension. When we seduce you, we want to absorb you. We want to make you part of us. This is because we see you as an extension of ourselves, but it is also because we want to ensure that you are isolated and cut off from any potential threats to our designs for you. It is also because we want you exposed to those who will only increase and magnify our charm, our magnetism, and our attraction. This means we need to expose you to and integrate you within our own networks. Accordingly, where we are the type of narcissist that has significant social circles and family connections, you will be thrust into their midst very quickly when the seduction has begun. It is akin to taking hold of you, hanging you over a vat of liquid which represents all of our supporters, admirers and adorers, and dunking you straight into it, ensuring you are wholly covered, utterly subsumed and completely dunked. You will be paraded around these very sources of ours in order to extract fuel from their admiration at our latest conquest. Our smearing of your predecessor will mean that the person is rarely mentioned, and if they are, it will be in terms which are disparaging about them and complimentary about us. This is how our coterie and lieutenants have been conditioned to respond for the purposes of maintaining our glorious appearance. We will draw fuel from all of their complimentary remarks, and, furthermore, we will be able to gather fuel from your delighted reaction at being presented as such a wonderful and perfect person. It amounts to a huge fuel fest for us. This integration with those who worship us and promote our agenda is a crucial part of how we draw you and embed you into our world. You are made to feel special and wanted, liked and involved as you find yourself invited to a family dinner, a christening, a wedding, nights out with our friends, drinks with other friends, an afternoon coffee and so on. So many ways to plug you into our world by using the all-obliging members of our facade. This absorption convinces you that we are the real deal. Who in their right mind would stand against such conviction from so many people? Nobody, of course, and that is how our magic is woven. You feel so fortunate. Not only have you met the partner of your dreams, but our family are so welcoming and friendly, and our friends are delightful. Nobody has a bad word to say about us. Little do you realise that this is almost like a television programme, with actors playing the parts of family and friends, and the wonderful places and events that we take you to are just scenery that has been created to give the appearance of reality. If you were able to look behind the scenes, then you would see one-dimensional cardboard cutouts, masking tape and spray paint. You will not notice, though. We do not allow you sufficient time to take everything in. You are whisked from one thing to another, festooned with compliments, spun around, whirled about, and not given any opportunity to consider, reflect, or scrutinise. Everything is moving, shining, and sparkling in order to distract you. Oh, those klaxons might be blaring, but you cannot hear them for the honey that is being poured in your ears. The red flags are flying, but there is so much glitter being thrown about by us, so much fairy dust hanging in the air, that you are unable to see those scarlet warnings. We want to draw you into our world through ensuring that you are utterly immersed in our supportive and obliging networks. This also means that if you happen to have some kind of concern, perhaps a slight inkling that something is not quite right, and you ask one of the many people you've been introduced to, you will receive the party line in response in order to ease your concerns. This absorbing you into our world, our band of merry supporters, provides you with little, or indeed no chance to resist. Whereas in your past you may have found the mother-in-law to be distant or a brother unwelcoming, friends jealous that their friend now has a new distraction and so forth, all of those potential problems do not exist with us. This is because the few that might know what we are, the handful which have not done as we say, the small group that does not comply with our command, those who may identify that there is something wrong with us, even though they may not know exactly what we are, have all been smeared and sidelined. They are not allowed to point out that the beautiful world that we have created is one of smoke and mirrors. Their dissenting voices have been silenced, their pointing fingers cut off, and they have been bundled away. 
If you ever ask about them, we will either ignore your questions or advance an entirely plausible reason why we no longer have anything to do with our brother or our sister or our mother or our cousin or that colleague. They are troublemakers. They know about us and they are not allowed to damage the facade. Of course, you will understand that as we explain why we have such a strained relation with that particular friend or relative or colleague, it is, of course, all their fault. You become an extension of us. We acquire your traits. We utilise them for ourselves, pass them off as we deal with other appliances. The places that you have been have become the places that we went to. We do not see you as an individual. We see you as something that we have attached to us to pump fuel in our direction. We see you as an extension of ourselves so that your assets now become our assets. Your income is our income. Your debts, well, you can keep those. But all else, you are but an extension of ourselves and therefore all assets that we require can be commandeered as necessary, and utilised to our greater glory. You have no sense of self. We do not see you as separate any longer. You are bolted on to us, attached, fixed. Our grip is strong and absolute, until such time, of course, that we decide to disengage from you. You become our extension. And... At times, you may hear comments, often by mid-rangers, which give the game away. They will talk of wanting to merge with you, that they do not know where you begin and they end, that they feel that they cannot get any closer to you unless they were to sink inside and subsume you. Many of these comments would appear to be romantic. Many of these comments would appear to be delightful. And, of course, the appearance of your emotional thinking spiked by the appearance of the narcissist and these words means that you will not see them for what they are and instead be conned into seeing them as romantic inclinations, beautiful words muttered by the narcissist as evidence of how much we are into you. They are, however... Little indicators, portentous remarks even, of what the narcissist really wants and how he or she really sees you. You are an extension. You are drawn into our world. You are absorbed. You become ours to utilise. Over and over again. <laughs>